The Power of the Truth by Jasper Reed Lily shoved open the marauder's door. Potter, she yelled. A yell came from James's strong curtains, Regulus and Regulus tum tumbled on the ground. His hair was disheveled, and he was missing a shirt. James opened his curtain and peeked out. He squinted in Lily's direction, unable to see her clearly without his glasses. Is that you, Lily? It is. Make yourselves presentable. I have a predicament. Bossy, Regulus mumbled good-naturedly. He sat on Remus's bed. James buttoned his shirt and did the same. Lily uh, st stuck her tongue out at Regulus. The two of them had a friendly rivalry since the year before. Lily finally understood the feelings for James Potter in sixth year and decided to pursue him. Unfortunately for her, James had already set his eyes on someone else. Lily and Regulus participated in a passionate battle for James's affection that Regulus won. James was none the wiser to this day. He still does not know that Lily ever harbored a romantic attraction for him. He brushed out his curls to the be uh, he brushed out his curls for to the best of his ability. What do you think of my hair, Evans? Regulus smirked, bowing his irritate knowing it irritated Lily when he alluded him and James doing sexual acts. Shut up, Black, Lily snapped. Your hair makes you look like a slut. Lily clapped her hands over her mouth, mortified. James was taken aback, but Regulus found the situation hilarious. What sort of truth magic did you entangle with? He, he asked through crackles. Oh, Ferretta serum. We made it in advanced potions. Professor Slughorn promised that he had antidote ready for those of us who brewed it correctly. However, he missed up. He messed it up. Our potion professor brewed the potion wrongly. Three students are now walking around Hogwarts under the effect of Ferritus serum. Why is that a problem? James asked, stupefied. Unlike the marauders, it isn't like you have anything to hide. Lily gripped her hair close to her forehead in frustration. You don't understand, she wailed. Explain it to us, James said. For it to sim can last 24 hours or more. There isn't a point for Professor Slughorn to prepare an antidote because the effect will wear off before it's complete. I still fail to see the issue here. The Gryffindor Christmas party is tonight, Potter, Lily snapped. And that's bad. Why? Merlin's beard, Potter, Regulus scoffed. It's about McDonald, isn't it? He asked Lily. She clamped her lips together, but the Ferrita serum overpowered her will. Of course it is about Mary. I'm confused, James stared, stated. He didn't like the way his boyfriend and Lily looked at him if they, as if he were a clueless child. I know you are, honey. The words would have been sweet if not for the sarcastic edge in Regulus's voice when he said them. Evans here has been infatuated with McDonald's for over a year now. It isn't our fault. It isn't our fault if you haven't caught on until now. Lily groaned in uh, despair and used her hands to shield her from James' uh, questioning glare. Is this true? She nodded. James shook his head, amazed. Wow. He mistook her frown for offense and got, and not the anxiety she was feeling. I'm not upset, he said quickly. I don't mean this badly, but I never expected it from you. Not liking girl part, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, but the liking anybody part, I always assumed you would go and become some amazing member of society and don't do it and do it all without a partner because you don't need someone else to let you, to tell you that you're perfect and everything this despite his bumbling approach james's words touched lily's heart it was such a shame that he 
had been a brat for most of the school year. He was a loyal person and a good friend. It was unexpected for me as well. I never gave much thought in who or what gender I'm attracted to. I was too focused on school to care. Then one night, in the common room, everything changed. The fire created the most beautiful light on Mary's hair. She looked like an angel and an empathy at that moment. Everything I had been feeling for Mary made sense. Lily met James' eye, blinking back tears. I love her, James. I really, really do. But I don't know what to do. You tell her, of course, James said. I can't just tell her I'm in love with her. Lily protested. Why not? It's what I did. James gazed over at Regulus adoringly. Regulus averted his eyes, but not before Lily caught the soft look in his eyes. That only worked because you're James Potter. No one could reject you. You did. That was different. Mary is my best friend. I can't imagine life without her. I can't handle if she rejected me, and it ruined our friendship. Mary wouldn't let that happen, James reassured her. If you're this distraught, why don't you go hide in your room during the party? Regulus droned, bored of Lily's plight. This is my last year at Hogwarts. I don't want to miss the party because Professor Slockhorn is a bumbling idiot, she gasped. Please don't tell... <gasps> Please don't tell him what I said. I'm definitely telling, Regulus Max. If there is no antidote and you don't want to hide, we'll help you. How? Easy. All we have to do is keep you, for, uh, keep you away from Mary all night. James leaned back on his hands, smiling smugly as if he just created the best plan of all time. Mary, is going, Mary isn't going to accept me ignoring her all night. It will upset her. You have your pick, Evans. Do you want to blurt out your feelings for the girl? Or would you rather afford her for the night and apologize for your actions the next day? Regulus was correct. Skipping the Christmas party wasn't an option, so avoiding Mary and at all costs was her plan. She couldn't do it alone, but this would but this would work with the marauders helping her. What's our game plan? Sirius shoved Rem uh, Remus's parchment and shoved Remus's parchment and ink to the side of the table as he sat his butt in the open space. Remus froze, quill poised to write, dripping ink on the carpet. Lily magically... Lily magic the mess away. Remus scooted around Sirius and resumed taking notes for the marauders' meeting. Not often did they allow an outsider into their midst, but James asked them for help for their help with Lily, and they were undeterred to deliver. And they were determined to deliver. Mary wasn't a pushover. She wouldn't take Lily, uh, Lily's avoidance lying down. They needed a stretch to, to distract and divert Mary throughout the night. I have an idea. James kept his voice low, since they were meeting during the broad day in the common room, as he spoke. As long as Rag doesn't have an issue with it, I figured I could pretend to get drunk and think I have a crush on Lily again. Anytime Larry comes, uh, Mary comes near me, I could stumble over and act obnoxious. It would give Lily an excuse to leave and probably annoy Mary to the point of giving up. That isn't a bad idea, she, Lily said. She wasn't looking for us to babysit. Uh, she wasn't looking forward to babysitting a drunk James all night, but compared to the alternative. What about plan B if James' suggest, uh, suggestion doesn't work? Remus didn't stop scribbling on his parchment as the group rambled on. Nobody would remember half of what they discussed if they didn't take notes. Everyone knows you and Lily are close friends, Remus. Perhaps you can bring a book and book and now uh, can bring a book and 
pretend to show her an interesting part, Peter asks. Mary is too polite to interrupt. The rest of us will run will run interference. Regulus will your slithern is out. <clears throat> the rest of us will run interference, Sirius decided. Regulus, will your slytherin friends help? This party is going to be chaotic. My friends thrive in chaos. Perfect. If James or Remus fails, we must be on the lookout for Mary, no matter what. She cannot come near or speak to Lily. Does everyone understand? A chorus of affirmatives rang out. Lily dropped her head on the table. She loved her friends, but trusted the fate of her closest friendship in the hand of the Marauders and company wasn't the wisest decision. The night was going to end badly. She knew it. James proved Lily's doubts wrong. Serious party, serious Barty and Peter smuggled fire whiskey into Hogsmeade and uh, and spiked every punch bowl. Uh, Even the one Remus tried to guard. James James did a spectacular job of faking being drunk and hanging off Lily. She knew he could act from his previous run-ins with prefects and professors, but she had no idea he was this talented. They loitered at in a corner, watching the seventh year drink themselves into a stupor. Every time James saw Mary head Lily's direction, he slung an arm around her waist over her shoulder, or every time, or won her ankles and babbled nonsense word loud enough for Mary to hear. Every time, Mary sneered at him and found something else to entertain herself with. Halfway through the party, Remus and James switched places so the latter would spend time with his boyfriend. Lily and Remus dragged one of the plush armchair into a relatively quiet corner and squeezed into it. Remus' legs hung over Lily's lap and Lily's elbow jabbed Remus in the back, but neither cared. The book the book Remus brought caught Lily's interest as he as he knew it would, and they poured over the text in dim light for hours. Near the end of the party, Reams and James altered once more. Regulus had had drunk too much, tripped over his brother, who, equally drunk and lying on the floor, had landed in a group of first year playing truth or dare. Barty and Ev- Barty, Evan and Peter quickly swept the brothers away to their dorms. They didn't realize they had grabbed the wrong brother until Barty and Evan were halfway to the Slytherin dorms. Sirius and Regulus had always looked alike, but similarity grew to an almost impossible task of telling the two apart after Regulus grew out his hair. Barty, Evan and Peter were drunk, so it was no surprise they were confused. Uh, James slipped out of the mayhem of the groups to exchange their wrong black brother and send Remus to deal with it. Remus was only sober in the group, so he was the most equipped to handle it. Too tired to deal with the black shit, Remus dumped them both into Sirius' bed and left them to their devices. The party would down... uh, would down after that until eventually it was only James, Mary and Lily left. Mary sat on the couch and glaring at Lily for 15 minutes before Lily broke. Seeing her best friend so upset tore her heart into pieces. The entire plan was dumb. Lily should have sent a note to Lily or someone to tell her that she was under the effect of fruity serum and couldn't be around for her that night. Lily hurt Mary's feelings for nothing. She tapped James's arms and startled him out of his doze. He jerked with an unattractive snort. Lily laughed before sobering at the daunting task ahead of her. I need to talk to Mary, she whispered. Tonight hurt her a lot. You were right, James. I shouldn't have avoided her. You admitting you were wrong is music to my ears, Lily. 
I must joyfully proclaim it in the heavens. Shut up, James. I'll take my leave now. I've left Peter and Remus alone with a drink, with a drunk Regulus and Ceres long enough. I'll see you tomorrow. See you. Lily watched James retreat to the stair of boys' dormitory with trepidation. Lily Evans, you bitch. Mary was seething and Lily faced her. Mary, hello, how are you? Don't act like you haven't been avoiding me all day. Tell me why, right now. You're being silly, Mary. I haven't been avoiding you. You haven't looked at me once tonight, Mary pointed out. I'm sure you saw that I've been occupied with James and Remus wanted to introduce me to a book he found in the library restricted section. Do you think I'm stupid? Of, of course not. I've known James Potter long enough to, to know what becomes a leech to his boy, that he becomes a leech to his poor boyfriend when he's drunk. The other black is so extremely, the other black is so extremely jealous. He wouldn't have tolerated his boyfriend hanging off another person unless he planned. Uh, it was planned, and he was on it. Mary sat on the floor in front of the fire. The sight threw Lily's mind back to when she realized she was in love with Mary. I don't understand. Did I do something to upset you? If I did, I didn't mean to. I would never intentionally hurt you. You didn't do anything, Mary. I, I'm so sorry. I make you feel like you had. I'm going to make through something personal and I need space. I should have told you instead of avoiding you. Why didn't you talk to me about what was bothering you? We always tell each other everything. The Verita serum in Lily's body prompted to answer. It wouldn't have ended well if I had. It was technically the truth. She's, she was screwed if Mary kept asking follow-up question to her vague answer. Why wouldn't it end well? Because it involves us and our friendship. What involves us and our friendship? Mary didn't stop digging. It made Lily uncomfortable. She fought against the hold Verita's serum had on her, but she lost. It involves my feelings for you, she admitted, defeated. Mary paused to absorb the information. Lily saw in Mary's eyes that she understood the implication of the Lily's words. Still, she asked another question. What specific feelings for me are you trying to hide? Mary wasn't in advanced potions, but she knew, but the news was all over the school that a few students were stuck with the effects of Verita serum. Lily must have been one. When dealing with Verita serum, direct questions must be asked. Lily squeezed her eyes shut, unable to see the rejection, unable to see the rejection paint on her friend's face. I love you. I'm in love with you. Mary didn't respond. Lily was on the verge of a panic attack when warm lips descended on her. It took a moment for her brain to reboot and then she kissed Mary back. She didn't understand what was happening, but she didn't complain. Mary pulled back first. She leaded her forehead against Lily's. Their breath mingled in a small space. You stupid, stupid girl, Mary muttered. What? Lily gasped. I've loved you for years, but you were always too dense to notice. I tried dropping hints, but you never picked up on them. Are you serious? Yes. I... I've loved you since fourth year. I wish I had said something sooner. Believe me, I wanted to. I was scared. Me too. May I kiss you again? Lily nodded. Lily brushed her lips across Lily in a chaste kiss. She pulled Lily into her arms and they cuddled in the common room couch until the early, early rays of sunshine chased them to bed. Hello, um, I hope you like this video. It's been oh, a short while since I uploaded something new. I'm very sorry. I've been a bit busy and 
I have ADD, so I'm horrible with planning, and I also have the attention span of a goldfish, so then when I was looking for a new fic to read, I got distracted by something else and decided to read something of um, just something completely different, because that's smart. Anyway, I'm sorry. I hope you liked this video. Um, I like reading it to you. Um, if you have any recommendations for this ship or any others, uh, please let me know because I don't know every fic, of course. So, and I would love to know more uh, fics or good fics to read to you. So, if you got any recommendations or requests, please put it in the comments so I can check it out. I will put the link link in the description so you can visit this and give kudos to the writer uh have a very very nice day and bye